What is up, everybody? It is Dives, Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. Welcome to Party on Broad. Uh, Party on Broad can be found on iTunes and Spotify. Uh, make sure you comment, hit that like button, and make sure you subscribe to the Painted Lions YouTube channel. Today, I got my man Tyson, uh, our resident hockey expert here at the Painted Lions. Follow him on Twitter at Quibell Tyson. What's up, man? Not much. Excited to talk about the draft, which is happening next week. It's Normally, this is when the regular season starts, but now it's, as, you know, as we know, uh, everything's changed. So we had the, the Stanley Cup Finals, Tampa Bay won, um, brought a championship uh, back to Tampa for the first time since 04, and uh, now we're already in the offseason here. So uh, Flyers fans in particular and any hockey fan, it's going to be a big next week. So let's go. A lot of questions. A <laughs> lot of questions, I think, for the Flyers. A lot of questions for the Leafs. They're kind of in this like weird kind of like gray area. Do they, you know, make the leap? Do they consolidate and, and make the leap to win now? Or do they just slow roll it and look to like three or four years from now? Uh, some really interesting scenarios. But before we get started, uh, what's your like overall take on this dr this year's draft, man? I would say it's pretty deep. Um, so especially in the first uh, 10 picks, even up to, I would say, even pick 15, um, it's going to be pretty deep. So there's pretty good talent available there. Uh, in terms of positions, uh, it's a weak draft for goalies. So one of the best prospects we've seen in a long time is there, but then there's a huge drop off. So the next closest goalie is not expected to be taken to likely the third round. Um, so that's, that's one thing. Uh, and the other thing is it's kind of weak on defenders. Okay. So outside of uh, two guys, uh, the rest are kind of, there's, a, there's kind of two groupings, kind of similar uh, skill level of defend, defenders in the draft, and then there's a big drop as well. So uh, that kind of makes for an unpredictable first round because uh, normally teams in the last few years in particular have taken close to eight or nine total defensemen in the first round. Uh, and it leaves a, a kind of a few questions surrounding that in terms of some guys – may bump up to the first that maybe their talent level wouldn't normally have them a first rounder, but for a team that is drafting on positional need, or we might see a record low number. Uh, so there's a lot that's kind of up in the air, yep. but it's going to be, it's going to be fun regardless. So um, yeah, that's kind of just the, the general overview. I wish I had that NFL draft time when it, when it goes, -na -na -na, -na 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 -na. <laughs> because here we go. Uh, the New York Rangers are officially on the clock. Uh, at position of need, um, you know, the, the Rangers are a young team. They're on the rise. They possess one of the top prospect pools in this league. Um, and you, I think they're looking three to four years down the road. Position of need, I got forward. Uh, they need some centers with serious upside. Um, but when you have the top pick, I think you got to take the sure thing. Uh, where do they go from here? What's the pick, dude? Yeah, I mean, I think this is a no-brainer. Um, our friend, Mr. Lafreniere, Alyssa Lafreniere, will go first overall. Uh, there seems to be very little question there. Now, there are two centers available at two and three, kind of in most lists. Uh, but regardless, there seems to be this consensus that Lafreniere will make an immediate impact okay. on the Rangers roster next season. So for that reason, I, I think it's a slam dunk. Uh, it's unlikely they trade down. They'd have to be blown away. Uh, the only possible scenario, and I think it's already off the table, there was a crazy rumor out there that Jack Eichel had asked for a trade from Buffalo, uh, and he grew up a Rangers fan, and so there was maybe some talk of maybe yeah. making that sort of switch, uh, but that seems extremely unlikely, um, and I think the Rangers will hold on to their pick and take our friend Mr. Lafreniere. Lafreniere is off the board which means we go to the number two overall pick, the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, the Kings are a team that I think they're like best position to go, best player available. Uh, they've got a really good farm system, but I think if there's a you know a, a team need, uh, I think it's center or on the defensive side. Uh, they're on the clock. What do the Kings do with the number two pick, man? I think that they're going to take one of two centers available. So uh, on my list and most public lists, you have – Quentin Byfield and Tim Stutzla, uh, the German, kind of together as the next two 
prospects. I personally have the Kings taking Byfield. They're both centers. Uh, I think the margin between the two of them uh, isn't super super big necessarily, but I think Byfield uh, fits more of what the Kings have, have chosen to pick in the past. And they do have a different general manager than when they had high picks before, but regardless, uh, Byfield is kind of he's, – he's big, he's strong, he's fast. His upside is number one center. I think that's the direction they would go, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they take Stutzla, who's a small, fast German as well. But if based upon what I think today, I think they will go with Byfield. Um, and yeah, and he Byfield has recently said that he thinks he's NHL ready. We'll see. He may need a year. Um, I don't think the Kings are going to rush him, especially not knowing even right now when the season's going to start. But that's my pick. I think the Kings will take Byfield. Mr. Byfield and Lafreniere are off the board. We are rolling to three. The third overall pick is the Ottawa Senators from the San Jose Sharks. Uh, interesting spot here. You know, they have two glaring holes, a first-line center and a future starting goalie. Um, I think that's the two biggest holes. You know, they, they need a game-breaker down the middle, uh, but they don't have a blue-chip goalie prospect for down the road. The Senators are on the clock. What do they do with the number three pick, man? Yeah, this one, I think uh, even Bob Murray, their general manager, said – or not Bob Murray, excuse me. That's not their general manager. Pierre Dorian, their general manager, he said uh, that uh, this decision will be made for him by the Kings. Uh, so, in other words, it doesn't sound like he's going off the board here at three. Um, he'll take whoever the Kings don't. So, whether okay. it's Byfield or Stutzla, that will be who they select at three. The Senators have three first-round picks in this year's draft. So in terms of positional needs, uh, they have a, a, a wide range of opportunity here. Uh, and also they have like four second round picks. I mean, they're in full rebuild mold. I think they have they have an insane amount of cap space. Um, they may actually even acquire more picks um, to utilize that cap space and help teams out because we have a flat cap this year because of COVID. Um, but regardless, uh, our friend Mr. Stutzel, if he is there, he'll be off the board. If for some reason he uh, LA makes a reverse, then they would take Byfield, but it, it's going to be one or the other. And, and I see them, this player being Stutzla here at number three. Stutzla is off the board. Uh, you pretty much chalk here a little bit, uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> let's go to number four. That is the Detroit Red Wings. They are on the clock. You know, I think this is a team that really needs kind of skill across all the positions. They're, they're bare up front. They have an aging mm -hmm. uh, core on defense. What do the Detroit Red Wings do with the number four pick, man? Yeah, and this is where things get really interesting. So you kind of have this, you know, clear cut number one, two, three could go either way. And then you have this grouping of guys between four and 10 ish, where it's kind of a toss up. It's going to be depending on what team uh, decides they desire most and what player they have ranked the highest. So there doesn't seem to be this consensus number four. So one of the things that's been rumored. A lot with the Red Wings is they're going to take Cole Perfetti, who's a player in the OHL. There's some organizational ties there. He plays close in Michigan. However, Steve Eiserman, the Wings general manager, uh, he's pretty quiet about his picks. And so he went off the board last year, taking Moritz Sider at number six. So it makes me think that if everyone is saying it's Perfetti, the, the bar to me says it's not Perfetti. <laughs> so it may not be the obvious choice. Uh, so I actually have them taking Swedish uh, winger Lucas Raymond. Um, Raymond yeah. is a, a highly skilled one-on-one -on -one forward. Um, the questions surrounding his offense already this year in the Swedish league, they've barely started. But he looks uh, like the questions we had about him have been answered. And I think he's too highly skilled for the wings not to take a chance on. I think they would prefer a center, but Perfetti is a, a, not a natural center either. He's a winger. Mm -hmm. So even if they went that direction, uh, that doesn't seem to be the the case. So I think uh, Raymond would be the choice I could see Iserman making uh, yep. for the Lynx. All right. There we go. Lucas Raymond is off the board. And we are moving to the Ottawa Senators uh, with the number five pick in the first round. The Senators need impact players. They have 13 picks, uh, seven um, seven of their top 20, 62 selections in this draft. They have four in the second round. Um, so you look at the Ottawa Senators, they've got a lot of talent on defense coming up through the pipeline. What do the Senators do here with the number five pick? Yeah, well, the question becomes, we got to get in the head of Pierre Dorian a little bit here. 
Uh, so there's, there were some rumors this week. They're looking at Jake Sanderson, who's a, a big defenseman in the United States hockey league at five. Uh, I think that would be a mistake. Not that I don't like Sanderson. I think there's just higher, better talent available. Um, the other one is Askarov, the goalie. Uh, they would make him the highest goalie pick since Price. Uh, again, those are just rumors. Dorian is claiming he's not drafting based upon positional needs. So I'm going to take his word on that. And I, this is where I have Cole Perfetti going. So uh, the Ottawa Senators tend to draft players from the Canadian Hockey League more than in other leagues. And so that kind of puts them in a position to take Perfetti, a future top six forward. Um, that way they both get a top line center, top line winger uh, in the same draft, just two picks apart. And both players could potentially be on their NHL roster as early as next year. All right, here we go. The Anaheim Ducks are now on the clock. The number six overall pick. Uh, position of need, goal scoring wings, and right-handed defensemen. They have a huge hole on the right side of their defense. Uh, they finished 29th in goals per game last season. Uh, so they, they need a guy that can get the puck in the back of the net. Uh, where do the Anaheim Ducks go with the number six pick, man? Yeah, I think they're going to go with actually one of the defensemen available just okay. because they do have a hole there. And I think they're going to go with one of Jake Sanderson or Jamie Drysdale. And I actually think they're going to go Sanderson, um, uh, which is a little bit surprising. But Sanderson fits more of the mold, I think, that the current GM, Bob Murray, there, I got his name right that time, uh, really would like. Um, he also plays in the United States Hockey League, where they took Trevor Zegers last year. Uh, in the past, I would have said Murray would have leaned either a Swedish player or from the OHL. But he's shown a willingness in recent memory to kind of expand a little bit but sanderson is often uh tied to hampus lindholm who's the ducks greatest defenseman uh, right now as a comparable as considered lindholm's considered one of the more underrated defenders in the league so i think that they would go the way of either sanderson and drysdale but i think sanderson is the guy that they're going to go for um he just fits their desire for size in particular and he's an elite skater so i think i think he fits for them all right, let's roll on to the New Jersey Devils with the number seven overall pick. This seems like the Boston Celtics this year. Like <laughs> the Celtics always seem to have like a top, like a lottery pick, and then like two, you know, mid late first round picks. But that's the New Jersey Devils. Uh, that they have Ty Smith. They got Riley Welsh. Uh, I think forward here. Uh, what do the New Jersey Devils do here, man? See, I would say I I was thinking that as well. However. Uh, if Drysdale is still there, I think they'll go Jamie Drysdale. Okay. Um, because one of the things that they're lacking is a high end defenseman right now. So they right now on their current roster, they have PK Subban um, and Subban is a name. that's a household name. However, he's in rapid decline due to injuries and just has had a bad last two seasons and he's not getting younger. So uh, outside of him and Damon Severson, who's a, a pretty good defenseman, he's just not a top, pairing like superstar type guy they need defensemen who can move the puck up quickly because they have jack hughes the first overall pick last year and nico he first overall pick from a few years ago so they have some offensive talent up front in terms of centers um they they can find some potential secondary scoring wingers later in with in the draft with their picks so i think they go with the right shot highly skilled puck moving defenseman and jamie drysdale at number seven Jamie Drysdale is off the board. Let's move on to number eight, and that is the Buffalo Sabres. I, I think the, the Sabres' biggest biggest issue is goaltending, but like their second biggest need has to be putting the puck in the back of the net. They were 22nd mm -hmm. in the league last year in goals four. Uh, the Sabres need a prolific goal scorer. So my position of need for the Sabres, playmaking winger. What do the Sabres do with the eighth pick? I think they go with Alexander Holtz, the goal scorer out of the Swedish Elite right. League. So, as we know, uh, Jack Eichel is a one-man machine. Um, they have a big playmaking center coming up probably this year, Dylan Cousins, who's considered by some to be one of the better prospects outside the NHL. He was the, the seventh overall pick last year in the draft. And so they need offensive wingers to kind of help take some of the pressure off Eichel um, and potentially this young center, Dylan Cousins. They also just got Eric Stahl, another center in a trade with Minnesota. So they have some them, some depth in the middle. Uh, they've 
they have some um, young defensemen as well. Again, this is a defense light draft. Uh, if one of Drysdale or Sanderson is available here, I could see them going that direction as well. But I think Holtz gives them that potential 30 to 40 goal score that they desperately need to take some of that pressure off of Eichel. All right. Let's move on to the Minnesota Wild with the number nine pick in this draft. Um, you look at the top prospects for the Minnesota Wild. Looks like the majority of them are all forwards. Could it be? Could the Minnesota Wild target defense with the number nine pick here? I don't think so. Um, I'm still reluctant on that. Uh, <laughs> I wish I wasn't. Again, if one of Sanderson and Drysdale are there, then yes. But it would be a little bit of a stretch just based upon what forwards are still there. That also in Minnesota just traded. It was a weird trade. They traded Eric Stahl. They got a winger who used to play center back but has struggled in that position. They want to play him as center, but they're desperately lacking uh, mm -hmm. a, fr a top two center. And so I think uh, they're going to go Marco Rossi here if he's still available. Um, I have Rossi like a lot higher on my board. Uh, as we know, like doing a mock draft is who we actually think teams are going to take versus who I think they should take. So if I was a team earlier on, like the Red Wings, I would take a look at him. But uh, I think that if he's still there, Minnesota needs a high-end center. Yeah. I think he has the potential to be that. He's also very close to NHL ready. He's one of the older players in the draft. So if he's still there, uh, I think he'd go that direction. If not, I think maybe they go Anton Lundell, uh, finish center uh, as well, or Seth Jarvis. But I, I do think if Rossi's there, that'll be who they have off the board. Marco Rossi to the Minnesota Wild with the ninth overall pick. And then we roll to number 10. And rounding out the top 10 picks <laughs> is the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, they've got one of the best goalies on the planet locked up for years. Uh, given like the Jets' kind of talent up front, do they go defense here? Right-handed defense? I, it's not a strong defense in this draft, but uh, maybe center? What, what do the Winnipeg Jets do with the number 10 pick? Some of their issue right now is that they are stuck with uh, a hole at number two center as well. Uh, Brian Little, who's been in that position for a while, his career might be over. So with that being said, they have a hole there. They also have a hole in defense, and they lost mm -hmm. Dustin Bufflin last year uh, and then had to trade Jacob Truba. So you're right. They have these two holes. Based upon the talent that's here, I think they go center, uh, and I think they go with Anton Lundell. So Lundell is a, a two-way guy. Um and I think that he fits a, a need for them. Um, they're not af uh, af afraid to go finish forward. And this is not kind of an off the board place for them to take him. So I think they go Lundell here. And then that that locks up that spot long term because even the last, well, yeah, even the last three trade deadlines, they've traded for a center. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin Hayes a few years ago, Paul Stastny uh, the year before that, and then this past season, Cody Eakin. So that is a hole they're constantly having to give up futures for. Mm -hmm on expiring contracts, and then they always lose them. They got to try to build it from within. I think Lindell's the guy to do it. Lindell is off the board. That wraps up the top 10 of the NHL draft. We are moving on to number 11, and that is the Nashville Predators. Uh, this is their highest pick since 2014. Um, you know, scoring wingers seems to be like the biggest weakness on the Predators in terms of prospects. What do the Predators do with the 11th pick? I think they go uh, Seth Jarvis. So Seth Jarvis can, is center as a center, but he can also play on the wing. Um, he absolutely tore up the WHL last season. He's a versatile offensive forward. He's a lot of what they're missing right now. So their scoring last year was just kind of dried up. Uh, on paper, they look pretty deep roster. Um, but I think they 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 could go with another one as Jack Quinn, uh, who some people have as high as ten uh, on their list. But I think that Jarvis has a, a potential higher overall game and ceiling. So, if, uh, and there, there's been a few rumors there that they would likely lean Jarvis if he's somehow still available. So, um, that's my guess is that they go with Jarvis. I think he's a good fit for them. All right, let's roll. Jarvis is off the board, and that means the Florida Panthers are on the clock with the number twelve pick, uh, center, right-handed defenseman, like they. Another another team that has a very good goalie prospect, um, but they're they in terms of center and defense, uh, I, I think that's where they're kind of going to look uh, with the number twelve pick. Where do they go from here, man? Yeah, this is a harder one to predict. There's a there's a handful of brand new GMs uh, in this draft. 
that have never ran a draft before. So Buffalo's one, Kevin Adams is brand new. Minnesota's one, Billy Garen is brand new. Florida, Bill Zito, brand new. So coming into this draft with Dale Talon picking before he his contract was not renewed, it was a slam dunk going to be the, the next defenseman off the board. Uh, I had them picking Brady Schneider all along. But with this new GM, uh, I think it – changes their strategy they haven't taken a defenseman since Aaron Ekblad back in 2014 however uh, they need um, all sorts of things on their roster and I think as a GM a first year GM you want to make a splash so I could see them taking Dawson Mercer uh, who's the center can also play wing highly skilled of the Quebec League some have him approaching the top 10 uh, Zito working for the, the Blue Jackets before have had a tendency at times to go for skilled players out of the Quebec League I could see them making this uh this pick at number 12 and I think he's also a good fit so even if it may seem defender again just based upon the quality that's here uh, I think they go with Dawson Mercer at 12. All right Dawson Mercer is off the board to the Florida Panthers and we roll on to the number 13 pick which is the Carolina Hurricanes uh, who had one of the best defensive teams in the league last year and they have a they have a young nucleus of cost controlled players um, but on offense was a completely different story. Do, do the Carolina tar- Hurricanes target the offensive side with the number 13 pick? Go ahead, man. <clears throat> yeah, and there's some split uh, ideas here. They are a team that is heavy on analytics. So analytics are particular into, for example, not take uh, goalies uh, or, or taking counts as high. So they're a team I actually have. They could use Askarov. So uh, Askarov's in my top 10. As you can tell, he hasn't been taken yet in my mock. Um, some of that is, again, with goalies, is a, a more volatile market, even if it's a, a good player. Some teams are a little bit skeptical. And so I don't think the Hurricanes would take him here. I mean, I see the fit, um, but I think they might end up going with WHL center Connor Zari. So okay. Zari is a, a player that has really great underlying numbers. Uh, he's a shot-generating machine, um, highly skilled forward. Uh, and so scouts are kind of all over the place on him. But I could see a more analytics-minded team like Carolina fill an offensive hole with a player like him. So, again, they're also loaded in prospects as well, the Hurricanes are. They're one of the best-built teams overall right now. So they could take a chance in Askarov. I just think that if they go with what they've done in the past, they'll go for a player like Connor Zari. All right, Askarov is dropping. All right, so then we move on to the Edmonton Oilers with the number 14 pick. Uh, looks like they should be targeting scoring – Maybe some goaltending. Where do the Edmonton Oilers go with the number 14 pick, man? I think they go with Jack Quinn out of the OHL. Jack Quinn had over 50 goals last year. Um, He's a goal-scoring winger. He's exactly what the Oilers have been lacking. Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl are kind of the solo show up front. They have a lot of good defensive prospects. They desperately need a goal scorer. If they don't go Jack Quinn, I could also see them go for Asperov here um, if he's still available. But I think that their biggest glaring need uh, currently is a winger, a goal-scoring winger. So Jack Quinn is that guy if he's still available. Uh, With the number 15 pick is the Toronto Maple Leafs, who have 11 picks, nine of them coming after the third round. Where do the Toronto Maple Leafs go with the number 15 pick, man? This is a hard one to predict a little bit because – the Leafs uh, are also known as a fairly analytically minded team. They also value skill over size. So uh, they actually last year, I believe, did not take one player over six feet in the draft. So if we're going with that as what they value most, I think they're going to go with Russian winger Radian Amarov if he's available here. Um, he's a highly skilled player. Um, he's uh, in Russia. Sometimes that scares teams away. I don't think that's going to scare the, the Leafs away. They regularly sign players out of the KHL. Um, they don't seem to be too worried about that. So he projects as a top six forward, uh, highly skilled. He has some YouTube highlights of him trying those lacrosse goals like uh, Sveshnikov in Carolina. So I could see them going for him on 15 if they don't trade their pick. There's a rumor they're they're looking to get a defenseman now. If that's the case, they're likely to move it. Um, if they can't make something work, I think that's who they'll take. All right, let's roll on to the Montreal Canadiens with the number 16 pick. Uh, I've got first-line center for these guys. Um, so they, they, this is a team that finished 19, 19th overall in goals four. Uh, Cole Caulfield is really nice, but he's down the road kind of guy. Uh, I've got mm-hmm. center. Where do the Montreal Canadiens go with the number 16 pick? 
So I actually have them taking the next defenseman here. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's be mostly because I think they had that question mark, but in the playoffs in particular, Nick Suzuki, their uh, their rookie, and Kakeniemi, who uh, was a third overall pick a few years ago, they they had some concerns about him on and off here, but they they both seem like they're on this up curve. So uh, based upon what they what they need right now, they need some defensive depth, and so I think they're going to go with Caden Gooley. Um, I know, fun name. Uh, Gooley is a big uh, defenseman, kind of a throwback, but he's a decent skater. Um, and so I think that's about that range we start seeing some of these defensemen go. And I think that that will be who they take here at number 16. All right. Here we go, defensemen. That it means we're at number 17, and that is the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, I think we're looking at another defenseman here. Um, they also don't have a single goalie prospect in their farm system. Uh, I don't think Askarov has been picked yet. What do the Chicago Blackhawks do with the number 17th pick? And if somehow he's still here, I have him taking Askarov. Yeah! So that, that is their, that is their desperate, that is their desperate need right now. Um, they have some young and up and coming defensemen. They took a forward third overall last year in Kirby Dock. So they need a goalie. And if he's there, I think they'll nab him. Um, but again, that kind of the, the range that people think there could be a surprise in the top 10, but I think between 10 and 20 is the likely range for Askarov. Spencer Knight, who is a, a good goalie prospect, he went 13th last year to Florida. So uh, if he's there, though, I think Chicago would absolutely nab him up very quickly. There it is. Uh, Askarov is off the board to the Chicago Blackhawks. And that means we have the second pick from the New Jersey Devils with the number 18 overall selection. What do the Devils do with this pick, man? I have them going with Hendrix LaPierre, a center out of the Quebec Major Junior League. LaPierre, for many people, was a top 10 prospect before the beginning of the season. And he had a, a multiple injuries, only played 19 games, and kind of was in and out of the, of the lineup with these injuries. So it wasn't a consistent total of 19 games. So his, his numbers were down. But at the beginning of the season, um, I saw him as high as number three on some people's list. So wow. he's highly, highly skilled, highly talented. Uh, it seems like a lot of the injury issues there where it was concussion. Uh, now it seems like it's more of a, like a neck issue than a concussion issue, um, which means some teams that might have been more scared off by that. Uh, are now more willing to maybe take a chance on him earlier than expected. So okay. he had potential number one center upside before. I think some teams are just banking that it was a, a year that can kind of be scrapped based on injury. And because the Devils have three first rounders, I think this is a guy they take a chance on at, at uh, number 18 here. So um, he's a few years away, but he is one of the most uh, – well-rounded players in this draft. So I think he's a good a good pick for them here at 18. All right. Let's move on to number 19, and that is the Calgary Flames. Uh, th this team doesn't really have that many issues. Uh, you know, th th so I got to think uh, they, they target offense here. What do the Calgary, Calgary Flames do with the number 19 pick, man? Yeah, they could go – I think there's two players they could target here. Uh, Dylan Holloway is one potential – that fits their style of player. He's a center uh, out of Wisconsin. But if we look at their like system as a whole, their, their draft system and their prospects, they're vastly lacking in defensive depth. And so I think they are going to go defender here. They also might lose two of their top four defensemen and TJ Brody and Travis Hamanick to free agency. So if that happens, they are going to have holes to fill sooner or later than later. So I think they're going to go with Braden Schneider, a uh, defenseman out of Brandon in the WHL. He's also kind of a throwback, uh, big, strong, physical, two-way defender. Um, his, I think his offensive upside is a little limited. Uh, but in terms of what Calgary would potentially look for in a defenseman in the first round, I think he fits that bill. So if he's there, I think they'll take him. Brady Schneider off the board. Let's roll on to the last pick for the New Jersey Devils. Number 20 overall. Uh, let's. Where do they go from here, dude? Yeah, I think they go forward again. I think okay. they go with Dylan Dylan Holloway if he's there. Um, Holloway is a, a different type of player than the last two. So there's a few questions perhaps surrounding Holloway's offensive upside. He didn't have a great offensive year, but he's also one of the youngest players in the NCAA. He can play center or wing, um, but he projects as more of a two-way guy. There's some grit and jam to his game. So he might be a, a, a good second, third line forward option for them down the road. So if you you go for a skilled potential top pairing defenseman in Drysdale, 
You go for a potential top six center in LaPierre with your second pick. Then you go with a, a player that has a little bit more versatility to his overall game. Uh, I think that that's a good first round overall for them with three yep. picks. So I think they go Holloway if he's still there. All right. And then we get to the Columbus Blue Jackets for uh, the number 21 overall pick. Uh, we talked about the Devils loading up on young talent. And then we get to the Blue Jackets, who kind of need, like, everything. Like, this is like, a team that really doesn't have that much in terms of young talent. Uh, where do they lean towards? Who do they go with with the number 21 pick? Yeah, they're an interesting team because they traded all their draft picks away uh, for this coming year in a lot of ways, other than their first rounder, uh, to try to make a cup run um, in 2018-2019. And they, they swept the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round and then didn't get past the second. And so they lost Panera and they lost Bobrovsky and Matt Duchesne in that free agency, never replaced them. They had to do so basically internally, a couple older free agent signings. And yet then they go ahead and they they beat the Maple Leafs in the first, you know, in the qualifying round of playoffs. They get into the playoffs. So they're a well-coached team. They tend to play well with systems, but they do have, like you said, so many holes overall and organizationally. I think they're going to go with defensemen here. They have Seth mm-hmm. Jones. They have Zach Wierenski but they need depth. And so I have them taking Swedish defenseman, William Wallander, a uh, big rangy defenseman, kind of considered a two-way guy, fits a lot of the t- stereotypical Swedish defenseman boxes. And I think that that is who they take. All right. And then we get- Do we to- need to do a 76ers update right now? Uh-oh, what happened? Uh, I just, my phone just went off and said that uh, Doc Rivers has been named head coach. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's, that's a good move for the for the Sixers. That's a very good move. Um, I guess we're going to be doing another pod right after this. <laughs> <laughs> it just went off, and I was like, "We got to do that, that break." I, I'm happy for the. That's who I thought you guys should. Yeah, be. that. There you go. Everyone saw that one coming. That good move, Sixers. Good move. Doc Rivers is a great yes. addition for Philadelphia. Um, anyway, that's a whole other pod. <laughs> you know, I love how we're, we're talking NHL draft. We talk about everything here at the Painted Lines. Uh, we do. Let's go to the Rangers with the number 22 overall pick. Um, they got a home run draft pick with Lafreniere with the first overall. Where do they go here with the number 22 pick, man? I think this is where they get their center depth. Um, there are a number of different options on the table here. And I went with kind of their draft trend over the last couple of years, which has been European centers, uh, in particular European players. And so I have them taking this one might be considered a little off the board. Russian okay. center Merit Merit Kuznetsov, probably butchering his name. It's a very long name. Um, I'm not joking. Uh, yeah, he's been a he's been a fast riser this season uh, out of the the junior leagues in Russia. And so he's 5'9", he's a smaller skilled center, but a lot of people think if he was not playing in the Russian Junior League, um, he would probably be closer to pick 15 in this draft. Um, But he may also drop as low as a late second round. Again, it's hard to predict uh, depending on what teams would want to do. But uh, the Rangers have not been afraid to take a flyer on some Russian guys, highly skilled center, uh, European kind of fits what they're attempting to build around in terms of skill. So I think that's who they take here at 22. All right. And here we go. Speaking of Philadelphia, we get to the number 23 overall selection. My, my team, the Philadelphia Flyers, are on the clock. Uh, the, the Ford group has been an absolute blast uh, through tw- 2019-2020. Um, they have a ton of high-end talent. Um, but you saw how they struggled uh, on the power play in those playoffs. I got to go with offensive forwards as a priority for the Flyers. Uh, what do the Flyers do with the number 23 pick, man? Yeah, I have three players they could potentially target. Um, one is Jacob Perot, a center out of the OHL, the son of Yannick, who was known as the NHL faceoff king for a while, uh, former Leaf. Um, another one, Brendan Brisson, the son of Pat, who's the biggest agent in hockey. He's been a fast riser out of the U.S. Hockey League, which is a, a league that the Flyers have chosen to draft players uh, out of with some regularity, at least. Um, you know, Cam York played in that league last year. There's been some others as well. But I actually think they're going to go with WHL center Ridley Gregg. Okay. Um, and Gregg, uh, his father's actually the, the WHL scout for the Flyers, <laughs> uh, ironically enough. Um, <laughs> okay. There's a, 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 tie, a tie to the Brandon Wheat Kings there as well, uh, where they drafted Nolan Patrick out of 
um, a few years ago. Uh, but even regardless of the, you know, the, the potential parental connection there, and again, they may choose not to pick them just for that reason to seem non-biased. But if you are a Flyers fan, it's not a bad pick at, at 23. Um, he was a riser this season. He's highly skilled. A lot of people think he's a potential top six center. Um, and so as the Flyers are, are kind of going to be looking for guys that are going to help them in cap situations down the road. Again, we're in this, we're in this time period now. We're going to be three years of this flat cap of 81 and a half million. So they need potential top six forwards, for example, that can jump in on entry level contracts. And they also have the time to wait for him. So I think it might be two or three years before you see him really like make a case for a roster spot, but he plays a really strong overall game. He's highly skilled. Um, Flyers fans will like him, I think, whenever he gets in the lineup. So that is my guess as to who the Flyers will take at 23. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, let's go on to the number 24 overall selection, and that is the Washington Capitals. Um, you know, there's a lot of offensive talent in this draft, um, but, you know, th- the Capitals need to add an a offensive player in this spot. I think they need firepower on offense. Where do the Capitals go here with the number 24 pick? I have them going with offense here as well. They, as you've said, they need some overall depth. That was part of what got exposed uh, in the playoffs when they had some injuries and things like that is they have, you know, this strong cast of like Backstrom, Ovechkin, TJ Oshie, even on defense, you have John Carlson, right? Like there's names that everybody knows, but they need depth. And so I think a a strong option here is uh, German winger Lucas Reichel. Um, So Reichel is a, a pretty strong forward he had a a really good world junior championships um a lot of people think he's going to be a offensive-minded top six winger at the nhl level and the capitals need that and so i think there's some uh, it would be a good pick for them there also there's some flexibility with some of these players over in europe they can sign them early put them in their farm system as early as 18 19 years old so i doubt he'll come over this year but he could be jumping into the uh, AHL franchise down in Hershey as soon as next season. So okay. they need that. They need these type of guys sooner rather than later. All right. Let's roll on to the Avs. Uh, with the 25th overall pick, the Colorado Avalanche are on the clock. Um, they, they, they find themselves picking in the first round the first time since 2014. Um, so where do the Avalanche go from here, man, with the 25th pick? Uh, They go, I think, Jacob Perot. I mean, they're uh, the center out of the OHL. They're so loaded in prospects as well. They're an interesting franchise. They had Bowen Byram last year, who will probably jump into the NHL as a 19-year-old. He's pretty incredible. Alex Newhook, uh, they took a center as well last year, who's considered by many to be a a top prospect. And so they can kind of go with who they want. And I think Jacob Perot is in the OHL. Joe Sackick has had a tendency to take centers from the OHL in the past. And on top of that, uh, he's a potential top six center that may need some time to develop. They have the time, and I think he's the best player available. I think they'll take him here. Okay. Uh, Correcting my mistake. The first time they picked this late since 2014. (laughs) All right. Let's roll on to the number 26 pick, which is the St. Louis Blues. Uh, Where do you see them going from here, man? I think they go defense. There's a lot of uncertainty for them with Alex Petrangelo potentially uh, moving on, their captain, um, just a year out of a cup victory. So they're at this kind of contractual stalemate. Um, Petrangelo not really wanting to leave, but wanting to cash in on this last deal. And so uh, there's some animosity kind of building there. And also there's just a hole there depth-wise organizationally. Um, They've given up a lot of picks for, for players to help them on these cup runs. Uh, and so they need some defensive prospects. And so this one might be a little bit of, su- of a surprise, but I have them taking Ryan O'Rourke, okay. uh, defenseman out of the OHL. Um, there's been some rumors around him swirling, going to St. Louis if he's available recently. But I, if I actually go back to old mocks, I've had him kind of fitting exactly the type of player mm-hmm. the Blues would take as early as November. So uh, he's a guy that uh, I could see the Blues taking. He projects as a two-way second pairing defenseman helps fill in our organizational need there at 26. All right. That is the number 26 pick. We go on to the Anaheim Ducks, the number 27th pick. This was pick was from the Boston Bruins. What do the Ducks do with a 27th pick, man? I think they go with one of two guys. I think they either go with Jake Neighbors, who's a, a winger out of the WHL. They like WHL wingers. 
but as well, Tyson Forster, and that's who I think they'll take a winger out of the OHL. Um, Forster had a, a monster offensive season, pushed himself uh, very clearly as a, a potential first rounder, where most had him ranked as a potential third or fourth at the beginning of the year. Put himself on the scene, um, checks a lot of boxes for the type of, of player that uh, Bob Murray would look for, similar to Braden Tracy, who was a late first round pick of the Ducks last year as well. So I think I think Forster's who they take as as at twenty seven. Gonna need some time, potential top six winger, but that's who they go with. All right, the Ottawa Senators are now on the clock with the twenty eighth pick. They already had a top ten pick. Uh, where do they? Where do you see the Senators going with the twenty eighth pick? This is a tough one because uh, they. They're, I'm thinking they're going to go for a defenseman here. And I think they would they could potentially take a chance on Justin Barron. Um, Justin Barron's a guy that I had ranked uh, a little bit higher in the season. He missed a lot of the season with a blood clot, uh, and that knocked him out. And then he came back very quickly and and showed that kind of two way talent um, that had him in consideration in the top twenty or at the beginning of the year. And then just now, before the season starts for him in the Quebec League. He just had a, another surgery and is out indefinitely. Okay. So he's a player that we're not really sure the details for the general public are not out on what that injury is. Um, I think that that could potentially make him drop even to the second, maybe even lower. However, I think the Senators, based upon his upside, could take a chance on him here, have a potential top four defenseman, and it's a good place for them to take a player like that is at the end of the first round. All right, let's roll on with the 29th overall selection, and that is the Vegas Golden Knights. What's your prediction for their first-round pick? They need defense as well in their system, so I think they go with sweet, big Swedish defenseman uh, Helga Granz. <laughs> uh, I love his name. Helga. Um, but he's a yeah. – yeah, Helga. <laughs> uh, I, I might be saying it wrong. If, he, if you're watching this, uh, correct me in the comments. Um, the big, big – another big, rangy Swedish defenseman. Uh, that has uh, potential to be more of a shutdown guy in his case, um, but potential to be a second pairing guy. Um, and I think that Vegas uh, desperately needs some some depth at that position. I think they go with them. All right. Last two picks. Number 30 is the Dallas Stars. Uh, where do you see them going with the number 30 pick? I see them going with two potential options here based upon who's left. Um, one is a Swedish winger, Noel Gundler, who I'm personally pretty high on. Um, there's been some questions around his overall game, so he may drop as low as the second round. Also, he may get taken by a team in the first. It wouldn't be surprising either way. But I, I think that the Stars would go with a center here. They need to build up that depth with Maverick Bork. Okay. Um, Bork is a, a two-way center. Um, scouts are kind of yeah. split on him in terms of upside, but I think that's a guy that you take a chance on late in the first. Um, the Stars, after making that cup run, you know, I, 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 I feel so bad for them in some ways. They're this veteran-laden team, Joe Pavelski almost <laughs> getting his cup. Not quite, um, but I think Bork is a good consolation prize there at, at number 30. Bork, man. Helga to Bork. These are <laughs> – this is the, NA, the the glory of the NHL draft right here. And then we have the Sharks with the 31st pick in the NHL 2020 draft. What do the Sharks do right here, man? I think they go with the German winger, J.J. Paterka. Um, <laughs> Paterka, yeah. Uh, so, and I say this, so again, no gun Lark could go here as well. I haven't taken Paterka because for some reason, if there's a German available, whenever San Jose picks, uh, they pick a German player. So <laughs> Paterka, some people have him ranked a little bit higher, some lower, but that just is what uh, the Sharks tend to like players that are come from that league. Uh, Marco Sturm was one that was there for a long time. Marcel Gotch was another one. Uh, and then Timo Meyer. I remember in the 2015 draft, the McDavid draft, I predicted the Sharks would take him. I think it was at 13. And a lot of people looked at me like crazy, like <laughs> what? And then they did because that's just what they do. So uh -huh. I, I think if there's one of him or, or uh, Lucas Reichel, if for some reason one of them falls, um, I think that's who they go for. Uh, I would be shocked if they went for anyone else. <laughs> if it's available, it's what they do. So our uh -huh. friend Paterka, potential top six winger, uh, I think that's who they go with. All right. So that is the first round uh, mock. Uh, anything you want to add final thoughts on this year's draft, man? 
yeah, I think I could just add a few names of guys that wouldn't be surprised taken. Again, this is a mock. So in other words, it's a lot of my choices are based upon kind of the leaning of the general managers we've seen historically. Uh, if they have a history, right? Many don't, unfortunately, in this draft. Um, but as well, just like uh, trying to figure out what a team would like the new to even based upon need. Whereas, you know, some teams will say, well, we always draft best player available, but, you know, uh, that's not always the case. So I think uh, don't be surprised if Noel Gunler goes in the first round. I would be shocked in many ways if he doesn't. It just didn't fall in terms of teams going there. Brendan Brisson, another one I would be not surprised at all if he's there. Jake Neighbors uh, as well. And then lastly, if there's any other defenseman um, that could potentially go in the first round, one of Jeremy Poirier, who I'm high on, offensive defenseman out of the Quebec League, and uh, excuse me if I butcher his name, Topi Nimala, uh, out of the Finnish league, uh, another defenseman that's been climbing draft boards. So okay. those are guys I think that could easily go in the first round. Um, but again, just kind of where things fell as I was walking through doing my research pick by pick, um, I think the guys that I have here are likely to be the, the guys that go in this order. Awesome. Uh, anything you want to plug to before we wrap it up? Yeah, I just finished a. F uh, I did a five round mock draft. I've done a couple seven round ones. Let's just be honest. Once we get to pick six and s uh, the six and seven in the hundred and nineties and whatever, uh, you, you just don't really know. It's almost impossible to predict. So uh, there should be a top five round uh, mock coming this week in anticipation. Also going to do some work on some potential flyers draft targets who they may specifically target. Uh, at that pick of 23 and also their second round one in the late 50s as well love it that is tyson quibell follow him on twitter at quibell tyson check out all of his extensive uh articles on the nhl draft over at the uh thank you everyone for watching do you agree do you disagree also make sure you comment below do you like your pick uh do you disagree with it let us know down in the comment section below Make sure you subscribe to the Pain and Lines YouTube channel for Tyson, for myself. Stay awesome, guys. And the Sixers win!